Hi, John with eTrailer. Hey, if you're looking for uh, extra capacity, cargo bike racks, stuff like that for your 2023 Chevrolet Malibu, then check out this Kurt Class 2 receiver hitch. This is a class two hitch. This is a inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter reinforced collar. Um, this is great size on this car, I think. Um, it has a black powder coat finish on it, um, which is gonna help it from rusting in the future. This is a good size for uh, maybe like a two bike rack carrier or a cargo rack if you need like extra space or if you don't want to put sandy stuff or muddy stuff in the trunk of your car this is going to take if you want to do some light duty towing this is going to take a half inch pin and clip now this is not included so if you are new to towing you need one of these and we have these here at e-trailer we also have uh, a locking type um, and if you're going to be doing some light duty towing check out our video on trailer wiring that we did on this car as well now, if you're in the market for bike racks, cargo carriers, um, don't worry about the pin and clip. Most of those accessories come with uh, what they call an anti-rattle device. It's a, it's a pin that just screws down and tightens it down, makes a nice firm connection. Now, as far as carrying chains, chain hangers, if you're gonna do light duty towing, these things are tucked way up under here. But you can see they accept that S-hook style. They'll take the clevis style and just about anything else. But it is tucked up way under here. Now let's talk about some weight capacities with this class two hitch. Uh, we're looking at 350, 3,500. The 350 pounds is gonna be the tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the force pushing down on this hitch. That's plenty enough, like I said, for a two bike rack or even a cargo carrier loaded up with a cooler. Um, for some light duty towing, 3,500 pounds. That's gonna be the weight of your trailer and then anything, any cargo that you have in it or on it. Now check with the owner's manual on your Malibu to make sure that you can tow that much weight. Now let's get a couple measurements. These are gonna help you when you're selecting either ball mounts for towing or folding uh, racks, cargo racks, bike racks like that. We'll get from the ground up to the inner of the top collar here. We're looking at 12 and a quarter inches. The other one we like to get is from the center of the pinhole. That's gonna to be to the edge of our bumper here. We're looking at six inches. These are good things to keep in mind when you uh, are looking at ball mounts that have a rise to it if you're gonna be doing towing or cargo racks or bike racks that fold up. So final thoughts on this Kurt Hitch. Uh, look, I think it's a great option, especially on a car like this. You're still gonna get good fuel economy, but it'll allow you to, instead of stuffing your bikes in the trunk and stuff like that, it just gives you uh, more options to either haul stuff uh, that you wanna do or maybe tow a trailer. Um, as far as the installation goes, it's kind of weird. Um, it depends on the model of your car. Um, our Malibu just had a single exhaust over here on the driver's side, so it made it a little bit easier. We didn't have to take the exhaust off. If you have dual exhaust, you may have to take the exhaust off. Um, there's a few other uh, items in here that you have to do in a specific order, but if you want to see uh, how to do it, stick around. We'll show you right now. So let's begin our install. Uh, a quick note on the Malibu here. Um, in the directions, it says that if you have dual exhaust that you need to remove the exhaust uh, completely. Now in our instance, we don't. We only have a single exhaust, so we've got some shortcuts here that we can take and probably save you some time. Uh, rather than removing the entire exhaust system, we're just gonna go ahead and lower it. Now just to start with, I've got a cam buckle tie down strap and I hooked it on either side of the leaf springs on the left side and the right side and cinched this up tight. This way when we start to loosen the exhaust, it's not gonna, it'll be supported and we can bring it down in a controlled manner. That way we don't damage um, any of the exhaust components upstream here. So we can start with a 15 millimeter socket and we'll remove the rubber isolators back here is two 15 millimeter bolts. There's tabs back there that are holding it up right now, and I'm gonna leave it um, up while we come up to this rubber isolator that we're gonna take off. Um, if you have uh, silicone or soapy water sprayed on these points, it doesn't matter which one you take off, uh, whichever one you can get out of there. So you can take a pry bar, and go against the ring back here, and give it a push. Now 
we can unhook this rear isolator. And we can bring the exhaust down. And that should give us enough room to work. If you have a uh, dual exhaust, just repeat the same process that we did on the driver's side um, and do that on the passenger side. Now, if you have the dual exhaust and you do have to take the exhaust off, you'll come up midway here, just in front of your catalytic converter. You're gonna have four bolts and that's gonna remove this cross brace. And then you can come to the flange gasket on your exhaust and you're gonna have two bolts on either side. You'll just loosen these up and slide your exhaust forward. You wanna hang on to the gasket, that is reusable if you don't damage it. Um, and then you'll just, when you're done with the hitch, put everything back together. Above the exhaust uh, muffler right here, you're gonna have this heat shield. Now it's being held on with uh, speed clips. I don't know which one you can see easiest, but we'll start with this one here. Uh, these things are, I'm sure they make a special tool to get these off, but I can use needle nose pliers to remove these. You can use, I would think like um, some snap ring pliers with the little prongs on them might fit up there pretty good too, but once you get a couple of turns on it, then you can loosen it with your fingers. You're gonna have five of them that you need to remove. Uh, if you have dual exhaust, of course, you'll have the five on the other side, but you'll have the locations one, two, three, four, and then five out here. Now on the heat shield here, um, before we take it down, just so you can see the orientation of it, um, the hitch is gonna be mounting to the frame right here. So um, we're gonna be cutting this heat shield um, and it's gonna be four inches wide and 11 inches deep here. So we can see that the frame is gonna be roughly from here to over here. And I'm just gonna make a mark here and we can measure it once we get it down. And 11 inches back. And these are just rough, rough cuts here. If, uh, if you need to trim a little bit more off, that's fine. If you over trim it a little bit, you're not gonna hurt anything. So uh, to get this down, once you get all the speed nuts out of there, you just kind of pull it down. come out the back and we'll trim this up next. So I'm just gonna use a pair of tin snips or aviation shears to cut this. Like I said, it doesn't have to be super exact here. We just want the, um, the hitch to be able to mount flush against the frame. Now, before we put our heat shield up, you're gonna see this strip of caulk. Uh, and if you have dual exhaust, it's gonna be both sides. Um, this needs to come off. Um, you can use just a flathead screwdriver if you like, and just work the screwdriver along the frame like that. And take your time. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty brittle, so it seems to come off fairly easily but we'd want to have the frame of the car and the hitch meet up without this gap in between. This would just make it easier for us to get the bolts tightened up too. Now here at the back of the car on the passenger side, even though we don't have dual exhaust, we'll still need to remove uh, the exhaust hanger bolt, this one right here, uh, because our hitch has a new bolt that will go through here and it will attach at this location. We can go ahead and reinstall our heat shield. You can double check the fit on here. Again, if you, if you need to cut some more, go ahead, 
Um, if you cut too much, don't worry about it. We're just making room for the hitch to come in right here. This looks like it's going to work for us. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reinstall the speed clips. Now we'll start over here on the passenger side uh, where we don't have a muffler. We're going to take the hardware from the kit. We have a fish wire and we've got some blocks and some carriage bolts. And we're going to be placing them up into the frame here. We have an access hole right here that we can use and the hardware already fits up inside of it. So we'll start, we want a bolt to come down out of this one and out of this one. We're going to start at the furthest point right now. So I'll feed the spring up through. And it'll come down right here. Start with a block and then thread your carriage bolt on. Slide the block up into the access port and then the carriage nut and then it'll come down. Leave the wire attached and we're going to repeat that for this one and then the same thing on the other side. Okay, it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you put this up. This hitch is kind of heavy and it's awkward. We're going to take our fish wires and remember we're going to go through the back hole on the hitch and then the middle hole. Then you just feed these through. Put some side pressure to hold that bolt. And you can thread this on there to secure it and that'll hold it and then you have enough time to do the other ones. So right now we have our hitch loose. We can wiggle it left and right. Now, one of the bolts that comes with the hardware is gonna be our metric 10 by three inch bolt. This replaces um, the bolt that, hold up, that held up your muffler and your exhaust. So when you're centering your hitch left and right, let's keep, you wanna keep in mind that uh, this new bolt has to thread through the front of the hitch here. And so you want to make sure that everything lines up. So this is one of the things you're going to watch you know, on both sides, uh, because regardless if you have single or dual exhaust, uh, the hitch bolts up like this on both sides of the car. So take this time right now to make sure that everything lines up before you torque these. Once the exhaust goes up, you won't be able to reach these to torque them. So we have our flange nuts tight right now, not torqued yet. And I left the, uh, the long bolts, the three inch bolts in the front on both sides just to keep our hitch aligned right now and push the hitch forward to make sure. This is, you could either do this or thread the bolt in and, and loosely tighten the nut. But what we're trying to do here is make sure the hitch is as far forward as possible on both sides. And then we can torque this to the specs in our installation manual. In our particular case here, uh, since we don't have a muffler, we can go ahead and tighten this uh, three inch bolt here. We're going to run it in, torque it to the specs in our manual, and then we have a lock nut that comes in on the other side. We'll torque that to the specs in our manual. Now we'll pull the three inch bolt out and we can raise our exhaust up. Remember this just hangs on this clip up here. So you don't need to have your bolts ready or anything. You just raise the muffler up. And it'll rest on this clip. 
and then we can go ahead and reattach the hardware, uh, the, one re, the one factory bolt uh, on the left side, and then the new metric 10 by 3 inch on the right side here. And then repeat that on both sides if you have dual exhaust. We're still going to have to find a way um, to install the lock nut on the inside of this. So we are going to use a crow's foot um, adapter to torque that down. Um, if you don't have a crow's foot adapter, you may be able to take the bolt that we just ran in and run it reverse and have the nut on the outside. That way you'd be able to torque this side before you raise the exhaust and then torque the nut on the outside here. Now with everything on the hitch torque to spec, the only thing that we have to do is just replace uh, the rubber isolator that we took off earlier and remove our cam buckle tie down strap from the springs. It's definitely way easier and way quicker than taking the entire exhaust off. And that was a look at the Curt Class 2 receiver hitch on our 2023 Chevrolet Malibu.